tonight on this investigation. Oh my god! Let's walk you out for a second. Let's regroup. Let's yeah, regroup. Let's yeah. Just let's walk for a second. Just walk. Just have to focus. Help me. I think it's to get in your head. It's working. Yeah, have a battery on our officer. What is the point anymore? My name is Adam, and for the last decade, I have been restructuring how we investigate the paranormal. I've been told there are demons here. <laughs> I don't even believe in that. My obsession with haunting has led to my ownership of two of our country's historical and most haunted locations. I rewrote the paranormal grid by partnering with some of the most influential investors in order to save buildings' histories from destruction. Along this journey, my friends and I will recreate events of the past. I got a bed for you! <laughs> I said I love you! And bridge the gap between science and psychic phenomena. Follow me as we continue to find and call the resident undead. June 9th, 1912. Deep, wet humidity hung over the darkest night Velisca, Iowa had ever seen. Clouds snuffed out the stars. A train warned of its approach in the distance. A spirit of aggression had fallen over the town, and a local utility company cut the electricity over a dispute. That night, the Moore family went home after a church service with two young sleepover guests who feared venturing home in the unlit night. Lena and Ina Stillinger. For the last time, Joe and Sarah Moore walked their children up the narrow, clattering staircase of their farm home to tuck them into bed. Herman, 11. Mary Catherine, 10. Boyd, 7. Paul, 5. We only have fragments of what happened next, as speculated by crime scene investigators. Nobody noticed the light smell of cigarette smoke that emanated from behind the attic door. Nobody heard the disturbance in the dark as the killer removed a kerosene lamp chimney and split the wick in half before relighting the fire. Nobody heard the faint clunk of boots on the hardwood or the creaking of planks as the killer covered every reflective surface in the house. Nobody stirred as the murderer lifted the axe and struck the ceiling and began the killings with Joe Moore, then Sarah Moore, then each of the four children in the upstairs room, all with a single blow to the head. Next, Lena and Ina downstairs. After systematically murdering everyone, the killer began his ritualistic manic rampage. Blood splattered onto the walls and the ceiling as the killer is estimated to have struck Joe's face over 30 times, hacking out his eyes. Each body was rendered unrecognizable. Downstairs, the killer lit another oil lamp and set a carefully wrapped slab of pork by the bed. The ax was left next to the bacon, still covered in brains and human hair. Delicately, the killer covered each of the victim's faces, some with the children's clothes. He washed his bloody hands in a basin of water, set out a fully cooked meal, and locked the doors behind him as he left, leaving behind bloody footprints and door handles smeared in blood, but undisturbed cobwebs on the window seals. Joe's brother discovered the bodies and word of the killing spread. When the house guest mother tried to reach the Moors by telephone, she heard her family's murder via the operator who reportedly said, everyone in that house is dead. Newspapers made a spectacle dehumanizing the victims and reducing them to a circus act. Over 100 people walked through the crime scene. One headline in particular rings true of how the murderers retreated from the moment the news broke, all the way until now, over 100 years later. The bloodthirst seems to have been sated with the obliteration of all semblance of humanity from the head of the victim. Even now, we obsess over something so terrible as if it is a work of fiction, something that could never happen to us as if that somehow protects us from the evil that lurks in the corners of our humanity. In addition to the murders, the more recent history of the house makes me question if the haunting has taken on an evil capable of influencing our reality. In 2014, one man nearly lost his life by what the police called a self-inflicted chest wound after he experienced what he says was a light anomaly. There are a lot of theories about who committed the murders, ranging from a reported religious murder cult across the United States to a violent convict, to a traveling preacher. After multiple investigations of my own at the house, 
I've always reaffirmed my theory that Reverend Kelly was guilty as originally charged. In conclusion, as I review the history, I keep coming back to the mirrors. Some cultures believe that mirrors can trap souls. Some anthropologists speak to the primitive human belief that our reflection and our shadow is a view to our alternative selves. Humans are a duality, light and dark, human being and animalistic monster, life and death. Hello. Welcome to Velisca. Thank you. I feel like the house itself has like a, there's like a pressure. Mm -hmm. Like I feel a weird tightness in my chest, but I can't, um, I can't make sense of the words that I'm trying. I have an image, there's definitely a voice speaking, but I can't quite make out those words. But I see a bloody boot on the ground, and the, that's it. Let's go inside. Oh, shit. I feel a tightening in my chest. My heart rate increased, but I don't feel anxious, so it's like an imprint of fear. And I looked up, and I thought for a minute there was a mirror there because I thought I saw the reflection of somebody in the mirror walking by, but there's no mirror there. I also feel very... The first thing that I feel when I walk into this house is not anything but... Um, like a cleansing or a blessing, like somebody tried to clear um, the energy. So it feels like somebody who practiced some sort of, I don't know, like a blessing. So somebody who practiced with prayer and energy has imprinted. So that's the first layer of the place. The place, like I have to start to, that's the first thing I feel is that. That and like my heart. I won't unpack it too much. But there's a little girl saying, I was born here, you know. Like, my expectation is that I'm going to see a lot of intense shit right away. But that's the first thing that I see is, like, a, a life energy and not a death energy, which is interesting to me. That is so interesting. Usually when you go to places that are dark, there's a lot of really dark energy. But this energy is very contained and, like, a clean... It really feels like somebody cleaned the haunting. Which doesn't mean it's not here, it just means that at a surface level, it is under control. It's not... I know that if I keep digging, I can find things, but I'm really fascinated by that because that is the opposite of what I expected. Okay, so you remember how I've said to you before that when I see an image that is tears of blood, it usually is a man of faith who believes that he has sinned. There is something creepy, there's something very creepy in here, I saw it earlier. It's like this, um, little boy. It's not actually a little boy, it's something pretending to be a little boy. And he's sitting here on the floor, like, ugh, like this, and he's crying these tears of blood. Yes. So he's not actually a ghost doing any of that, it's like a, it's the image he's giving off in order to intimidate. At the time that it happened at Sedumsville, I didn't know. That's what that meant, so I just had this really intense image that I didn't have the meaning for yet, but now that I see it in this context, I would say, I see a man whose face I can't see very clearly, and I see tears of blood, which for me says that that is a man of faith who believes he has sinned. This is, this house feels like a, it's tricky because I don't know if what I'm seeing is truly energy that is connected to this haunting or if it is somebody else's energy imprinting an expectation onto the space. So what I just experienced was a thin man with thin hands holding his hands out with water running through his hands and he said the water the water washes me clean. Right? And it was very it had a very sinister feel to it. But how do I know? Cuz I I can't tell. There's so much here 
that I, I need to sit, I honestly, I need to, to really mm -hmm. sit and connect with it because it's so, there's a lot, there's a lot that I, I walk for God is what the, the, the words that would have gone along with that image are. So I feel pain in my chest and I feel like my, it's, there's a thickness, it thickens, um, it, the energy definitely thickens, which means it becomes more collected and potent in this area, which means this area is important. I know that I'm getting a lot of information, I can feel myself receiving it, but I'm having a hard time. I feel like this, the surface and then something slicing into a hard surface. Um, that is important, the devil you know. The devil you know. Yeah, it's the devil you know. I don't know what it means, but it you feels heard that? important. Or that, though, I think is just a residual impression. That's not like an actual... Okay. It's so interesting, though. There's obviously been so much work, like psychic energy stuff that's gone into this house that the minute everything rises up and it's like really uncomfortable and scary it automatically bottoms out and smooths out which feels like intentional work by lots of different kinds of people who do very different kinds of things with energy so like people who you know pray for peace and I know I keep coming back to that but that's what the energy keeps doing after this We'd waste no time and set Chris up for his psychic-led quarantine. This is a strategy that we developed over a decade ago that allows Becca to remote view a particular area of interest while one of us is isolated. Together, over many investigations, we have honed this tactical approach that combines science and psychic phenomena for more precision as we deepen our understanding of the paranormal. It is also important to note that Chris is an incredible father, and because of that, I truly think that's why he connects the best with the energy of children. I personally don't believe the family is still here, but if they are, Chris is our best shot in the children's room. While he attempts to establish communication, all of us will be in the barn next door to eliminate the possibility of human contamination of the paranormal. We will also have a TV set up in order to monitor everything in real time. You know what we don't get to, to tell everybody is when we walked down after walking with Becca, mm -hmm. one of those little race cars in the kitchen went flying in the middle of the floor. Yeah. Of course, when your cameras are shut off. So I, didn't want to I, would, I didn't want to talk about it, I was so mad. I was so mad because we couldn't get, we, were, we just turned our cameras off. That's the way it always works, isn't it? One, starting recorders. One, two, three. All right, recorders are running. One recorder here. And one recorder on the edge. I think that should be good. All right. Here we go. All right, give me about 30 seconds. All right. I wish I could describe what I'm seeing in my head, but this one's going to be hard. Imagine a skeleton of a man mm -hmm. walking. But it's almost like he's underneath an energy x-ray. Now that sounds really crazy, but it's like me, it, that sounds really intense, but it's me trying to explain what's happening. The energy has him veiled, so I feel like it is a, almost like a binding that's been placed on him by somebody. So I can still see him, and I do think that the energy that is around him right now is a man with ill intent that I do not think is actually, I feel like it's the original haunting of the building. A part of the original, yeah, but it's, in one of the it's layers. But it's covered in other people's energy that's mm -hmm. keeping him at bay almost. It keeps him from being able to do much. There is an evil energy here, but it has been touched by so many people that mm -hmm. work with energy and the paranormal that it, it doesn't seem to have a lot of power. It really feels like somebody cleaned the haunting, which doesn't mean it's not here. It just means that at a surface level, it is under control, but I can see it and I do think it can interact. So Adam's already out of the house. And I've already heard footsteps coming from the adjacent room. There's a really sinister energy, but I don't know if it is part of the house or if it is a collection of expectations. Please, on the There was a toy downstairs just a little bit ago that got pushed off into the floor. Was that you? I think 
Guerreiro. You all right? What do you feel? What do you feel? Uh, like a really, like, my, like I'm having a heart attack. Are you in here? I just passed. You in this closet? He was looking at the children's closet when you did that. I don't know. Do you need some water or something? No, no, I'm okay. I don't know what that means. A chest pain? No, 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 no. It passed. It was just okay. like a, it was a psychic impression, but it was really mm -hmm. intense. Let's take a little walk. I'm gonna walk in here a little bit. Well, no, I won't. No, I won't stay here. Because I just heard something. Sound like a giggle. I heard you. The image of. I don't know if that was a giggle or a cry, like a, a whimper. <sighs> Out of my peripheral vision, it looked like a shadow crossed right in front of that. that closet. The image of what would be the person who perpetrated the murders, dressed up as a little girl, laughing maniacally. That's the imagery it's showing? I keep getting that imagery. I've seen it three times now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is either meaningful or it is a game. I'm sure it's something. I can pull at it to see if it has meaning or if it's just... Sometimes darker stuff just plays terrible games, you know. Hey guys, something just rattled so hard it made the windows rattle up here. What are you feeling up there right now, Chris? I was kind of feeling a lot of sadness there at the beginning, but now feeling a lot of anger, you know? I'm starting to get pissed off. if that's like an instinctual reaction to the energy shifting see it's so weird i wasn't gonna say anything when we were setting up up there um for yeah, the cameras up there like, we weren't filming anything i felt angry for a yeah, second like toying with you and they want to make sounds and not did he just say somebody's toying with you yeah toying with you making sounds like trying to get your attention yeah but the image of the man playing a game playing a game dressed yes. like a girl yeah the image of what would be the person who perpetrated the murders dressed up as a little girl laughing maniacally oh my god it was just and again like the feelings up there like chris said something so nonchalant to me and i got angry for a second i like wanted to snap about it it was like nothing i was like okay it was just over a cord i didn't really say anything the first time but it's the second time it just felt like something's pulled on the cord with this camera wow that's a very dark energy i don't know that i've ever it's been a while since I encountered something so dark. There is any children still here. Don't be afraid to come talk to me. What is your name? What is your name? My working theory is that the residual, this is a residual haunting that has been fed enough that it has taken on a life of its mm -hmm. own. That's my working theory. I think things that are evil have nested here because it's like a Disneyland for them. It gets highlighted. You know, things to that extent. Anything that's wicked just comes here and sticks. Well, it also feels like a video clip. Like if mm -hmm. you hit, like I could hit play on it and watch the same terrible residual thing happen over and over. And the mm -hmm. players, that's, a, that's not the right word, the people in that video clip have a life of their own. Walking downstairs. We're all still at base. Figured as much. Since you don't want to come up here, whoever's down there, can you push that toy off again? The energy just dropped out. Just like gone. And as you've been saying, it keeps it, it just comes in waves. Yeah. Right? It's just coming in waves. Yeah. Waves of, if you'd like what the ghost just said, waves of blood.
which is a, just that dark, mm -hmm. terrible. What are you picking up on, Becca? I don't know if I intimidated whatever's here for now, but it kind of subsided a little. Like waves. He's saying that too, like it's in waves. It's like, like it's subsided yet. Yeah. Over and over and over again and asking mm -hmm. that energy to communicate with you. It's funny you say that because Becca said the energy's moving like in waves. It's coming and it's going. It's coming and it's going. So the question is, how do you get that? Yeah, definitely. How do you make that video play on purpose? Knowing that. Well, it, how do you trigger it to yeah. make it come out, yeah. right? Knowing that it is not physically the spirits of these children which makes me feel better about triggering it. Mm -hmm. How do you hit play on a residual haunting on purpose? Listen, I don't have a lot of time left to talk to you, and if you're hiding from me, you need to come out. Are you under a bed? Are you under a bed? It may have been the Reverend. Truly, it might have been. We'll never know for sure. Come in here. I hear you in there. Sounds coming from where that camera's at in there. In that I have room. An That's idea. in the parents' room. Have him say that Christ like sent three him different here. Times now. Trigger the haunting. Hey, Chris, I need you to tell the haunting there that you were sent by Christ. I was sent by Christ to talk to you. Chris, tell him that your angel said that he messed up his mission. He got it wrong. Tell him he got it wrong. You got your mission all wrong. My angel messed it up for you. Whatever that meant, I don't think they liked that. Imagine that there's a God complex in the room. Mm -hmm. Imagine that these terrible deeds were carried out by Reverend Kelly. Now imagine yeah, the energy change after I asked that and I heard footsteps downstairs again. Part of the loop. It's part of that replay. Because mm -hmm. that's the first thing I experienced. Remember the boot on the uh, ground. The boot on the ground was the very first thing you said when you got here. A bloody boot on the ground. And the... that's it. That, so it triggered Four, it. It hit so play. Noisy. Imagine that okay. Reverend Kelly thought that the voices in his head were saying, Who covered this mirror? God, God is telling me to do this. God is telling me to do this. Mm -hmm. I am carrying out the work of God, and you need to, you, you need to go. You right. Need to the person still here that did that, it took a lot of anger. It took a lot of anger. Imagine that you are dealing with somebody who believes they are a man of God. Now imagine in this scenario, you are telling this person that you are actually the man of God and that you are there to tell him that he, your message is what's correct. So I think that you should get by the bed and pray on your knees. I love you, Becca. I owe you one. I am the man of God. That, so that backfired. What happened? It's a camaraderie. He feels like he's a comrade. Oh. I am. I am. I am. Let's get him. Let's do an active EVP up well, there. Okay. And then... But we have this information. Oh, let me turn the recorder off. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's an IR blocker. We're going to stop that. Oh, God, it feels weird here. I know. I got, I've had that IR in my light, or my eye so much, I can't see it. Here's okay. Oh, here. Okay, it should be back to regular. Well, let's just do an active EVP real quick, because we don't know what was captured, obviously, in your quarantine yet. Right. But let's see if someone has to talk. Listen to whoever's here. Um, we would like to speak to the core, whatever's here. It's going to be an open mic. Please come forward. You can say whatever. All right? I will be able to hear you. On the count of three. One, two, three. Go ahead and say whatever.
That EVP ending, ending, ending? What's wrong? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just... I heard you breathing there. Like, you're starting to, like... Are you hyperventilating? No, I just feel like I keep losing focus on, like... Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel very... In and out? I just, um... I got the psychic impression of a man saying, Sleep sweet. Sleep sweet. Mm -hmm. I've heard this phrase before. But it was like so, it was creepy, but it had a, a sort of power over my, I don't know how to explain it. It like, it was enough that I felt my energy just, mm -hmm. I lost control. Right. Is what I'm trying to say. I lost control over what was happening. Let's play this back again. Chris here for you. All right, let's see what we got. One, two, three. Go ahead and say whatever. Dude, no, it can't. 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 Oh my god. It can't, dude. It's fing right there. I'm the Reverend. Holy oh, shit! Oh, yes. oh, that would be answer. I just can't believe that would be the Jesus. first answer right out. I'm the Reverend. Man of God. Uh -uh. Yeah. Are you shitting me? God is telling me to do this. God is telling me to do this. Mm -hmm. I am carrying out the work of God, and you need to. You, you need to go. First hit. I'm the Reverend. Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't know. Just in my head. The hunt was supposed to be a little harder than that. Such a weird sensation. What we're gonna do, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, let's reset real quick. Let's set up for an Estes method. Okay. All right, let's go oh, dibble. Right, right, let's just keep just keep going down because I'm not gonna accept that. I'm not gonna accept that yet. Daddy, was that still running? Were you able to, when oh we were God. doing that, we were watching? Okay, yeah. listen to this. I don't know what? if you heard it. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. Listen to this. Listen to this. I think you probably heard on the TV, but listen. Hang on. One, two, three. Go ahead and say whatever. Right there. I'm the Reverend. <laughs> First thing. <sighs> Dude, that's so good. But it's like, it doesn't make it it's so easy. Like, it, mm. it's like, uh. When I've been listening to podcasts on the drives out, and one of them said something about sleep sweet. Sleep sweet. And I'm trying and to find it again. You heard someone say, in reference to Velisca. Yeah, on one yeah, of the Velisca okay. episodes. I just, um, I got the psychic impression of a man saying, sleep sweet. Thank God for Addy. I was frustrated and puzzled at the same time that an answer would be given so quickly. But like I've always said, there is no receipt to an EVP. Anything now occupying this space clearly knows the history and has listened to enough investigators come through that it knows exactly what to say in order to spark a reaction. Perhaps it does that in order to feed from the energy we give off due to excitement, frustration, or anger. Answer me! And if that's so, we've given this entity more than enough of a charge to communicate clearly with us over an Estes method in the attic. The Estes method is a strategy where only one person is listening to what's sweeping over the SP7. And it's a popular choice due to its ability to completely eliminate front loading, which otherwise may happen if a large group is listening together. We are going to do the Estes method here in the attic. We are going to use a very simple SB7 is right here. It's going to be on a 150 millisecond sweep. Um, <laughs> we got your headphones there. We're going to blindfold you. Okay. And let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get some more answers farther and, and peel back the layers, right? Yeah. Got you here. I'm going to set you up. Go ahead and put the headphones on, Chris. Okay. All right. Tell me if you can hear. Do you hear that? Like it's, it's, on. it's on. All right. It's sweeping. All right. Go ahead and put the blindfold down. Well, time. Okay, it's working. Hey there, how's it going? Good. Jesus. <laughs> Are you okay? My eyes burn and my vision keeps getting blurred. Everything's fine. We'll take note of that. 
listen, we just want to understand what is here now. I'm quite sure that the haunting has changed over the last decade. A monster. What did you yell in your quarantine? Did you yell that he was a monster when you were here last time? I said a lot of mean things to him in my quarantine back, back in 2014. Something just changed. I feel uncomfortable right now. It, uh, I do feel a shift in the room already. That was quick. It feels like I just got very... What did you just think of what you had said? You must have just thought of something. You it's me. Said. When you asked me that question, I could see myself back in 2014 sitting exactly where he was. And what were you saying? Taunting. Come up here behind me and just attack me. I'm by myself. Come on. I remember coming out of this attic and I said, God forgives, we don't. I want you to know, Reverend Kelly, we've heard the EVPs several times. God forgives, we do not. What do you want? What do you want? I want to know. Reverend, male voice, holy shit. If you are the Reverend, why are you here? You didn't die here. What made you come back here in death if it's you? God, so much coming through. It's hard to. I feel faint. No. Work through it. Work through it. I'm fine. It's just a lot of energy. There's a lot of people who do mediumship mm -hmm. that come through here. Right. So it's it's true just... mediumship that takes mm -hmm. the energy in. That's what after it's... me. After me. Help. Female voice. Dude, this thing is so dark. Or what is it? Is it? There's no receipt to an EVP or a message or a voice coming over. We don't know exactly. He's out there. I think this room's wondering: is it is it a ploy? Is it making you think the family's here talking about it, or is it more likely residual of anything? Now, I don't believe that the family's here. They were good people. They're not going to be here. I think this is one entity putting on quite a show. I'm Moore. Moore is the last name. Moore is the last name of the family. Oh. Yeah. I'm not, but I'm not getting anything other than it, sensations. Exactly. I don't feed into it. Anything can say anything. A very young, soft female voice come through and said, God. I don't know how to explain it. It is an energy rush that comes through me that usually would have some sort of intelligence attached to it, but right mm -hmm. now it just feels like a psychic rush. Oh my God. It said, Daddy, and then a guy said, Yeah. Oh. Jeez. I'm scared. So what? Female I voice. I keep seeing. See, I think it's using that. I keep seeing this replay. It's terrible. It's dark. It's tragic. There's a little kid running through the house, looking for someone to help. The tragedy has already taken place, but there's one kid running around. It keeps replaying in my head. He's coming. But is it letting us see this? Is it letting it? You know what I mean? Like I keep thinking it's like a video on replay. On replay, and just press it when it wants to. Hey, watch this. Uh, right. That's something like I swear to God, a male voice has said Darwin. Darwin Lynn was the he was the he was the man who purchased this place. Darwin Lynn. I met him back in 2010. Hey Darn, you you run with it. We'll go with you. All right. So we'll see you there then. Are you the puppet master? Adam. Okay. Well, he's calling you. Out. Remember me, dude. I got chills everywhere. Like, legitimate up and down my whole spine, body. He gets it. Mm. Shit, that's dude, creepy. I'm like, dude. That's the second spirit in your career that has tried to say that you are equal to him. An evil, evil man. Is that like a trigger for you? Why do they try to call you evil? Because all of us are monsters. The difference between you and me is I don't have to listen to that voice all the Again, time. Again, Adam. Yeah. Okay. You couldn't, you had to listen to your voice. I can turn mine off. I think they off. remember you, Adam. No, they do. This is just like Hensdale. Mm -hmm. In Hensdale, you were called the monster, the equal monster. You used your anger in a destructive manner. I have used my anger to motivate and build things. We're different. There is no common ground. There's two sides. monster when I first got up here. Yes. It did. Right when we walked in, monster. A monster? Well, there's two kinds of monsters. Oh.
a female voice said, Mom, you could hear she was crying out for her mom. It seems like every day, no, 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 listen, you know, listen. gave me chills, it made my heart hurt. It's but no, pressing play. You start digging at it, all of a sudden, play. I'll let you, I'll let you hear what happened. I'll let you, I'll let you hear things. That's terrible, though. That's, like, awful. There's a lot of emotions starting to this, I get it. No, it's, that's like somebody... He's the killer. I s swear to God it said he's the killer. You started to get deep, and then he's like... Shh, shh, I don't know if we're going to pick up my audio. We won't, but something... <laughs> I heard something thud out there. There's a deep male voice in there that keeps coming through like five times now, like trying to say something, but I can't make out any of the words he's saying. It's creepy as f You know what I find ironic about all this and why I'm here? It was to tell you how much I've done since I was last here. You're still in the same place. Reverend or whatever entity is here. You're in the same place. I probably have a lot of spirits that have followed me here. And they're going to dig deeper with Becca to figure out what you are. Is that right? Yes. After this heated Estes method, We'd head back downstairs to the living room where we'd bring out one of Jeff Fent's newest and untested boxes, the oscillator box. Connected to an old hack Jensen radio that is jammed into scanning from high band to low band continuously, the one advantage to this which stands out against all other Fent boxes is the oscillator itself. Used in real-time military operation to detect aircraft and ships, it will help us visually see possible electronic voice phenomena captures immediately when they happen. All right, here we go. You'll hear it cycling through. you do I, you know as we keep digging through this right i think i need to understand what you are trying to find what is the bottom line of what you want to know when you leave this place i want to know what's at the very core at the very center i was talking to hauser earlier when we arrived the haunting is not the same after the last 10 years right it's evolved i want to get back 
to what it was. I want to know if that's still here. Uh, foreign versus domestic haunting. Is what's haunting Velisca not even domestic anymore? Is it something that's, that's just jumped in and knows the story? That's what I want. Recorders are running. Recorders are running. Good luck. Thanks. Um, dig into the haunting. That's what I'm saying. Just see what, see what you can ping and let's keep digging deeper. That's all I want. Okay. Okay. All you right. got this. I do. I'm confident that I have this. I know you are. You're the best of the best. Thank you. That's really sweet. Here we go. Okay. I am now alone in the iconic Velisca Axe Murder House. <laughs> I have waited so long for this moment to have her alone in the in this house to just dig at it. Right. Do what she does. Do what she does. The space is very eerily calm. With like on the periphery there's like a I can feel the vibrations of energy just kind of like circling me. You know what I haven't told a lot of people? What's when I that? first met Becca, okay. one of the first dreams she had about me was a man <laughs> axing my face in a dream, just taking an ax to my face. She didn't know anything about me going to Velisca. Is that right? Okay, that was a really loud, energetic sensation in my mind, and it came from that direction over there and everything feels like it's ramping up That was, that was the sound of something being dragged, something soft, and I just felt something in my hair. You know what I knew was going to be most here, difficult come. about this? What's that? Is all the impressions that all the That's other ghost hunters yeah. have left here. That's true. To reiterate, I am here to speak to the original haunting. Who was here first? But like, is it even still here? Is it? That was a rush right. of energy. And that was a rush of dark, dark energy. I'm gonna push my energy out because you're not allowed that close to me. But I do want to hear from you. If you are stepping forward to say you are the original energy of the Velisca Axe Murder House, I'd like to speak with you, please. That is some creepy shit. I just felt like fire go across my eyes and the image in my mind was a man saying, the blind cannot see. Your eyes cannot see me. The image in my mind was a man saying, the blind cannot see. Your eyes cannot see me. When we were doing the Estes method. Are you okay? My eyes burn and my vision keeps getting blurred. Everything's fine. Holy shit. Addie said her <laughs> eyes were burning. You said your eyes were burning. Yeah, but also the John, the dad, <clears throat> his eyes were completely gone because he had been hit so many times. You're right. I can't see you like I'd like to see you. You are a bit slippery. That's mm. creepy that, is that his eyes were like... Oh, it, yeah. Adam, it's weird because the... The recorders are steady, they are picking things up, but I'm not necessarily... Having... It's like a layer I can't quite get to, to have the direct conversation that I usually am able to have. That's okay, you're doing perfect. See, here's what I know about you. 
if you truly are the original haunting. I know that that intimidation that I feel from you is the intimidation from something that hides in the shadows. That definitely got an aggressive response. The energy just swept away, so I'm gonna reach back for it. If you are stepping forward to say that you, the darker energy, that you are the original haunting, please say something into these recorders so that everybody can hear what you have to say. I'm going to ask you one more question before I move on. Because I actually don't think that you're the original haunting. I think, I think that you attached yourself to something incredibly tragic. And I think you tried to take credit for something you had nothing to do with. So I'm going to dig beneath you and see if I can dig into the actual haunting. When I said that, I got a very clear psychic image of a child standing next to me. Hmm. That was weird. I just felt, it was as if something breathed into my face. Like I literally felt heat go across my face. I do believe that I'm speaking to the original haunting right now. Uh, like the original, I feel like I've been able to connect to a core. Good. And that core is Good. like, um, like a family, you know? Yeah. I just got a very clear image of snow covered roads and a little girl petting a horse excitedly. This is going to do something. Mm -hmm. This is going to do something right here. See, that's what I think the original haunting is. I think that it's what happens whenever something truly beautiful is taken away. That's the core. That's the core I'm looking for right there. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I'm really sorry. All right, we'll come get you. After pulling Becca from her quarantine, we'd wrap up for our first night's investigation and be left with so many questions to ponder in our sleep. The haunting has evolved from the last time I was here, and now I find myself questioning everything that we've captured. I no longer think it's the murderer that haunts this location, but something much more sinister with an intelligence I've never encountered. Back in 2010, the house just felt scary. In 2012, the haunting gave off an unoriginal feel. But now, after an entire decade later, the house just feels self-aware. Is that right? We are beginning night two's investigation of the Velisca Axe murder house. We walk through during the day a little bit to feel it out. Um, it does feel a little different from last night. Night one, always when we do two-nighters, First night is to kind of feel the energy out. It's reconnaissance. Uh, tonight, we're going to get a little bit deeper with this. Now, Becca, have you felt anything change so far as well? I feel as if the energy hasn't ramped up to its full potential yet. Yesterday, once you started to get into the investigation, it started to get more and more intense, and there was that incredibly dark energy. I can feel that dark energy on the peripheral, but I don't feel, it still feels like the volume is down low mm -hmm. on the haunting. Does that make sense? It does. So what we're gonna do, Chris, you've got the SP7. We're gonna go old school. We're gonna listen Yeah. Uh, see what we can get, so. Who's rumor am I pointing at? 
the sound of something being dragged, something soft. What do you want? Maybe it was like weird. I just want to understand why you're still here. You know what I find interesting? People come here all the time and they use this. At this point, you can talk if you want to. By not responding to us, you are showing us a choice. With hearing Ina's name over the SP-7, we decided to move over to the room they occupied on the night of the murders and hold an active EVP session. Our first recording would capture nothing worthwhile, but then Becca would propose we take a much more different and radical approach for the next one. Wow! Oh my god! Wow! Yes! Dude! It begs the question, can you communicate with a residual haunting? I don't think so. Through EVPs? I don't, I don't think so. We talk about it all the time, like, I don't know. I don't think so. Let's try it. Let's try it intentionally. Oh, just, like, five-second burst. Okay. Like, a, well, I'll give it, like, longer than that. Okay. But see if we can just, like, just let it run. Just no, see. I want to intentionally try to communicate with a moment in time. Okay. okay. And we don't have this where this is we've controversial. This, this is controversial. Yeah, we've never done this. I want to communicate with that moment in time where it is dark and she Maybe can't just see. by talking about it, that's how you activate it, if you're aiming towards it with your energy. I want to talk about that moment that keeps coming back up. Because last night, Addie's eyes caught on fire. Mm -hmm. My eyes caught Yours on caught fire. on fire. I didn't understand what it meant. Mm -hmm. It's a communication of sear. This is, this is terrible and it's hard to say. Searing pain that blinds you. Mm hmm. So okay. I want to communicate with I don't I don't want to communicate with that moment, but I I am curious if it works. Maybe that's how you trigger residual. Like we think at this exact moment we want, yes. right? All right, let's just think about it. Let's all let's just think about it. Aim at that. We're recording a moment in time. See if we can record a moment in time that is already pre-recorded. Right. Just by thinking about this moment, let's see if we can access the residual something from there. That's deep. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna do a countdown and let's see if we can lock into a residual of somewhere closer to 1912. One, two, three. Ending EVP, ending, ending, ending. All right, Chris, I'll play this back. Help that so you see here. One, two, three.
There was definitely a solid whisper at the end. Playing that last part. Does this say help me, Adam? Adam. Yeah. It does say help me, doesn't it? There's a help me in there, but it was not with an axe? Wait a second. I don't know if I'm hearing that right. It's a little whisper. It was. <gasps> Do you hear it? it, was, it, is, it is it that or is it It was done with an axe? Maybe it was done with an axe. I mean, listen to the syllables. Do you hear that, though? Because. Oh! God! It was. It was done, maybe it was. It was done it. with an axe. I heard oh. it was done with an axe. Oh my God! I'm covered in chills, dude. Wait a second. All right, let's listen dude. one more time. <clears throat> Holy shit! I'm just listening to the syllables at first. It was either. It was not, but it could be done. Wait, done. No, what are the implications? What are the implications of that? You can communicate with a moment in time. If you think about it hard right. enough, which is f revolutionary yes. thought. Oh like it's just God. all. Let's just think about that moment. Take yourself back to that. F moment like time travel to the moment try to like think oh, in your head yes yeah, yeah, and well, now your entire premise when you first came here was i want to travel back i want to travel the back past. to the past holy shit wow oh my god wow yes dude help me it was done with an axe help me that's sad that is like powerful as holy shit we may have learned something new we may have learned a whole new tactic right now like you know what right. you know what it, uh oh 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 think about this for a second think about this okay. for a second we're talking about unlocking a residual right yes. someone comes to the crime scene oh, cool. right the town is here right okay. first person that walks in it was done with an axe help oh. me oh my god, god right Holy cow. It's the it's the person witnessing it. It was done with an axe. That wouldn't be them. Right. It's someone walking in that sees the f***ing scene. Yes. And it's like, it was done with an axe. Help me. Go, we got to clean this yes, up. I can see that. Oh, my God. Right now, we are in the Moore's bedroom. It's at the top of the stairs here. We're going to do another active EVP. Let's do the same thing we just did. And what we did downstairs was we just literally in our minds, try to think that we were in that moment. We're trying to communicate with a residual energy. And how do you do that? Maybe it's just us thinking about it. Maybe that's what does it. So let's all think very hard again and try to take ourselves back to that summer of 1912. And let's see if we can communicate with it. On the count of three, one, two, three. Ending EVP, ending, ending, ending. All right, Chris, I'm gonna bring it back to you real quick. One, two, three. At the, at the very beginning, did you hear that too? Like a voice. Yeah, it was like I, I was trying to hear that too. Right out the gate, there was something. One, two, three. <gasps> One, two, three. Help me. It's class A, Omiya. They can't get me? Okay. Do you hear yeah, anything about a bed? I'm under the bed. After this, we would head back to the barn to exchange batteries and take a closer listen to what was just captured. Although, before we could do any of that, we would be intercepted by a traveler who came by train and claimed that the house called to him all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. Did you get all that? I did. Did you get all that? Oh, please tell me you filmed that, okay? <laughs> We're not losing our minds. Oh, interesting. Where are you from? 
And how'd you get out here? Uh, freight trains. I'm a real, I'm a new swing hobo. Oh, you're directly tied to freight. It's calling me. Wow. So you came all the way from Vegas? Oh, no, I've been to all 48. Did you hear that? Oh, Did you hear that? okay. Yeah, we, uh... Do you have a moment to see Yeah, we can come out there. We can come out there. Uh, hang on, I need my, my light, yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah, because I know who made it. I know what happened. Like, they hopped on the freight, but that was, like, in the school for about the, like, getting the mass murders and the serial killers, and they're hopping on the freight to get away. Hmm. Well, actually, they're, like, children, spirit children seek me out, because I'm a light in the dark. You know, right, right, right. And you know, I was just in county jail in Davenport, and the, I was in county, and the cops, okay, I have a battery on an officer. I'm not proud of it, but they fucking stole my GoPro. Yeah. No, we don't got any on us. <laughs> Did you get all that? I didn't. Did you get all that? Oh, please tell me you filmed that, okay? <laughs> that we're not losing our mind. Okay. He said that place was calling him. Did you hear that when he first pulled up? Yeah, did he you catch that? Like the whole yeah, she did calling. on that. Oh, he didn't get it on. <coughs> I'm a new did. hobo. This place is calling me. Thank you for picking that up, though. Like, thank you. Well, like, someone's got me filming this. And I know we got that, but I know I can translate yeah, that. I had already prearranged to have Johnny come out later this evening. But with everything that just happened, I sent him a quick text to see if he was free. There's no way I could wait another hour to verify what just occurred and to find out how often this actually happens in Villisca. And I'll be completely honest, the curiosity is killing me because the last time I've heard of a traveler coming to this house, it was 1912. Nice to meet you. How's it going? Good, how are we're you? already going dances here. We're super excited. <laughs> uh, how many hobos come through Villisca? I've seen one. What? Really? Wow. Okay. In okay, twenty now years, I'm, I've been now here. Creeped out, actually. Like, <laughs> number two. So we're out here. We were just before you were, you came. We were just getting stuff ready. Mm -hmm. We're walking up the ramp, and we're getting set up. And we turn around. You actually saw him across the street. And I said, "There's somebody coming here." You're like, he's just, his energy feels real sketch, right? Yeah. I'm like, that's oh, everybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we look at it, we see him, and he's talking to some car that goes by, and then we get in the house and think nothing of it. But then you kept looking in the window, and you're like, he's coming towards the house. So Chris and I are standing by the screen door, and we're just, it's dark in there, it's just our silhouettes. Mm -hmm. And he beelines right through the lawn and goes right up the ramp. We're like, oh shit, he's coming up, right? He's got a whole f backpack on and everything. He has a big sleeping bag. Oh, like everything. It really gets, it gets more depressed. Yeah, then... He comes up to the door and we're like, hey, hey, what's up, man? And he's like, uh, what does he say? He's like, um, oh, hey, how do, how do you get in this place? Yeah. I'm like, we well, can't, we, you know, we're he here. He's like, what we're, are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And we told him that we filmed and he goes, oh, I know. Yeah. It's like, I know you're filming. We're like, oh, no, cool. And that was, then he starts rambling on about, like, uh, the house called him. And he's traveled all the way from Las Vegas, ultimately. And he's, he, right? He mm. said he's, he's so, children's auras. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, where's the cemetery? I want to go see the graves. I'm like, it's so creepy. Yeah. And he's like, can I just go in the house? I'm like, no, I mean, no, I can't, can't yeah. do that. And uh, finally he's like, well, I guess I'll just go sleep in the cemetery tonight. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, I'm totally driving is. through the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're going to ask you. Ask you. Yep. Are those cameras recording? The, the just, one, just the one aimed yeah, here. Yep. Are you able to oh, rewind yeah. it back? Oh, dude, can we, can we film this real yeah, quick? Absolutely. Here we go. This is strange. You just gotta watch this dude. The way he walks right up to the house. He's never been here before, but he meant to come here. It would have been around like six o'clock, you think? It was dusk, yeah. It was basically just getting dark. Okay, so not quite that dark. No, because I saw him at the- Well, wait, there is something of us. I think I might have been us going in. Well, I see, you'll see me turn around. Yep, that's it. There, look at that. Yeah, dude, look at that, Johnny. Look at him, dude. Holy shit, that's a lot of back. Uh-huh. We're in the door. You can actually see us stand there. We're like, hey, what's up? I've never, ever had a homeless person come to the Axe House. I figured this is a common thing, dude. Yeah, me no, too. Never. I've never. The only time I've seen a homeless person in town is when they're sleeping. Uh -huh. And they're just like, hey, we're, I'm just sleeping here. Mm -hmm. And that was like in July. Yeah. Yeah, dead of winter. This is really weird. Do you have the uh, clip here? Yeah. Hey, let Johnny hear that. 
He's like calling me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, yeah. Does it? Okay. So I understand that sometimes people are just drawn to popular places, but for me, like knowing how this house is, like, does it bring like possession vibes or mild possession vibes? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, you got the dude that shoved the knife through his chest and. Before that, in the 60s, the guy that shoved the knife in his hand, like there's a pattern mm. happening with that. And this guy um, randomly comes up, mm -hmm. he's called to the place. Like that, yeah, that, that kind of creeps me out. Me too. <laughs> and, he, you know, it just happened, so he's still around here somewhere, mm -hmm. and he's They're called. sleeping in the cemetery, so. Oh, I'm totally yeah. driving through the no. cemetery after. Yeah. I usually, when it comes to, like, that whole possession thing, I'm usually, like, hands off very unlikely but mm -hmm. like this really has gotten me creeped out so i don't think like typical catholic church possession Same. thing Same. i think the house is its own entity like rose red kind of yeah and i think the house has the power to affect people if yeah. that makes any sense yes like, well I don't, yes yeah. yeah yeah i don't think it's ghosts or right. the killer influencing mm -hmm. people i think it's the house itself and I think it preys on people that aren't mentally stable or rooted in whatever faith you believe in for right. protection, and it exploits that yep. 100%. So it's natural that it would be a beacon for yeah. crazy, transient people saying the house is calling them. Now that, I mean, it freaks me out enough that I'm probably going to call the sheriff. I might just call the cops now. Yeah, just and, let them know. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny has given tours of the house for well over a decade, and thousands of people visit it yearly. Knowing that, what are the odds on the night we come back that a traveler comes through saying he's been called to the house? Anyone who knows me and my mathematical probabilities of outcomes knows exactly what I'm thinking on this one. If this traveler is telling us the truth and the house did call him in, then the house is conveying what it can do by showing us how easy it would have been a hundred years back for a traveling axe murderer to pass through undetected. Is the house finally showing us some answers? But speaking of answers, after reviewing the oscillator box used in the living room, it occurred to me afterwards that I think they were trying to tell us that Hauser is the answer. I have the answer. I have the answer. I have the answer. Hauser. Hauser. And he is the missing variable to this paranormal equation. Going on this notion, I asked Johnny if I could have 20 minutes of his time to observe his energy alone in the house. I'm starting to feel myself getting like really pissed off. Rolling on recorders. Recorders are rolling. That's why the lighting on that went weird, because we lost the light. I know you know me. You see me every day, and I walk in here every day, and I talk to you, and I clean you, I try and make you look nice, I try and tell everybody about what happened, I try and do it with honor and dignity. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, you know me. You know me, and I know you. You probably know me better than anyone else does. It's also in the light. In the light, man. I probably know you better than anyone else does. What on earth? So I just want to ask, like, a favor, I guess? I've been doing this for so long, but I still have questions. I still wonder. You know, I've still never actually seen a ghost. <laughs> Can you do something for me as a favor for all my time to stay here? Just like make some kind of huge noise or show yourself or, or maybe I don't want to see you. I don't know. He 
You know what EVPs are at this point. You know what EVPs are at this point. You all, you know all the lingo. All the teams that come in and out of here all the time. You deal with it. This isn't your first rodeo. I don't know what I want or what I'm asking for. Or what I'm asking for. A lot of times when I come in here, it just seems quiet. I was going to say that I expected his energy to calm and mute the space because naturally I feel as if he is very grounded. Mm -hmm. But what I'm actually seeing is a duality within him. I think he is part of the duality equation. What I mean is he is both grounded, but he spirals up so fast. So like, you know, that light and dark, that um, life and death, fear and that he's, he's a walking example of that duality. Today, I can, like tonight, I can feel you. I know you're here. I can feel the tension in the house. I feel like you're hiding around the corner. You don't need to hide. I know you're here. Well, that was weird. That How was mediumship. Feel? That was a nod. I'm not interested in who did it or any of that stuff. What I'm interested in is knowing without a shadow of a doubt, like, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just going to sit here and I'm probably going to ramble. And if you want to do something, do it. If you want to do something, do it. If you want to knock something over, knock it over. If you want to knock something over, knock it over. Just saw uh, look like a shadow in the kitchen. Why do you continue to draw people here? He's getting very deep and philosophical of understanding like what is actually Shadow happening. Did you reach out to him to come? He's a... That wasn't a coincidence. That wasn't one of those freak things that just happened. You, you know. You know you brought him here. The house is its own entity, like Rose Red, kinda. Yeah. And I think the house has the power to affect people. Why? I'm not judging. I don't care. Curious, feeling the energy of this place like getting thick. Like I feel like I got a a big weight on me, and like I'm half tired all of a sudden. Are you sick and tired of people coming in here all the time? Oh, I feel weird. Oh. I get it. These are great questions. Yeah, I'm gonna judge. This is great. Yes, it is. I wouldn't want people coming into my house all the time either. It's deeper than like, you know what I mean? Like imagine the irritation. I, I apologize for that. I know what you can do. I get it. I respect that. I ain't going to step on your toes. Cause I have nothing but like love for you. This house, you know that. I don't want to piss you off. I don't want to annoy you. I just kind of want to be like, I don't know. Oh, there's Johnny. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. He fragments the space. His energy... Okay, so I just saw something I have not seen. Mm -hmm. it, when his energy goes out, the space fragments. So instead of this one big haunting that is mm -hmm. a collection of everything, I started to see pieces of it. Like young... The first thing I saw was like a young dude. Mm -hmm. Like, who is into really dark stuff. Um, but it, like... Uh, imagine you throw a rock into a water, and the water goes mm -hmm. everywhere. Droplets. It's almost like I can see psychic droplets. Interesting. Of all the people that have created what the haunting is now. Mm -hmm. How? I don't know. More family, if you're here, sad. 
It's horrible. I don't even want to imagine what it's like to... I don't even want to say it. There are definitely energies that are attracted to him. It's like that duality again. There is energy that is attracted to him and there is energy that he repels. And what I'm curious about is if there was a way to trigger that within him right now, what would happen? I can just like physically feel it draining me. Johnny, I want to try something. What's that? If you can hold both of your hands out, Imagine dark energy, so it could be white light, night sky, you know, that kind of thing. I know it's cold out, but it just got really cold. I'm imagining light energy in this hand, and the dark energy in this hand. And I'm feeling on the dark energy side, like that side of my head is pounding where the right side of my head is not. It's like a headache on one side only. I, you know what I think that is? I think that's an acknowledgement of yes. Mm -hmm. Like. Yes of. Yes, the, like it, um, confirmation that he is. Oh, because it's a half even on him and a half like. He can feel it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm actually seeing is a duality within him. So I feel like that is confirmation that this theory is accurate. What the fuck was that? Yes! Yes! <laughs> it is so cold in here right now. It is so cold in here right now. <laughs> I think you heard something about him. Did you, did you hear something up there? Yeah. Yeah, it sounded like something moving. Mm. I'm starting to feel myself getting like really pissed off. What exactly does that feel like? What a joke. Mm -hmm. Just furious. With, I'm just gonna speak freely. Like, I just feel pissed. Like, give me a break. What the do you think this is? Like, you think you're doing something? Like these people coming over and over again are actually Accomplishing anything? Accomplishing anything? You think you're doing something? Yeah. It's almost like talking yeah. through him. Talking through oh him. my god, the scene. That's exactly what I thought. Battery is dying. People coming over and over again are fucking accomplishing anything. Oh my god, straight to the Estes. Like, yep. any idea whatsoever about anything? I probably have a lot of spirits that have followed me here and they're gonna dig deeper with Becca to figure out what you are. Is that right? Yes. And it's not like a mad feeling against people wanting to know what happened here. It's more of a mad feeling like a cocky like, oh, you think you're something? And I'm feeling like a touch in my left hand. Like in the palm of, like a finger. Like in the palm of, like a finger. <laughs> that mad feeling is kind of lifted a little bit, but it's like a big, a big overwhelming feeling of, who do you think you are? Oh, I just got a weird feeling. Spreading through my body. We should go talk to him. Okay. I think it's Pete. Well, I'm very frustrated. Well, grab the okay. grab the recorder. So it's the cycle again. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Johnny, we're gonna come in for you. Okay.
If you don't want me investigating, I won't. I don't know. I just like being here. I just hope, I guess, that you like me. Did you feel that? Okay. Yeah. Cold in here. Yeah, here's freezing. Like I, I feel like somebody's yeah. squeezing my head and I can't get my thoughts out mm -hmm. at all. I was just saying I have a hard time putting this place into words. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about, I don't know why I'm here, I know I'm doing this, I feel that sometimes too. You know, when you were saying that, oh my God, we were talking about the energy was moving in and mm -hmm. out. Yep. Um, you also said something when you were when you felt that anger mm -hmm. come over you and you were like, who do you think you are? All this stuff mm -hmm. in our Estes method, I felt the same things you were saying. Like, what's the point of all of this? Yes. But what's the point of all of this? Right. Yeah. It's like, you guys are fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you come in here with all your shit? Uh huh. No, you like, said, so you had a really weird, your first day here, you waited years to come back, but your first day you were expressing such similar things. And I was mm -hmm. like, God, it was so eerie when you said that. Yeah. Like, we let it ride because we wanted to hear it, but like, yeah. oh my God. Oh my God. That the duality was, yeah. thing was really Oh, cool. the duality. Okay. But what I'm actually seeing is a duality within him. He was grounded and then he was spiraling up. Yeah. So what I almost, yes. So your energy for me, I expected it to be just incredibly grounded, which it is. But there's this like, opposite thing that happens where it ramps up so fast and so high at a completely different frequency than I expected. It's like you have a bass note and like a soprano note in your in your energy. Mm -hmm. And I was so interested in that because I didn't expect it. So that's what that experiment was, that I think that you're such a core part of this place and of this haunting that I wanted to see if you held both components of it, what happened. Mm. It was really interesting to watch. Yeah. You know what was the most powerful piece, though, is when you were like, what's the fucking point? Like, I, I'm just going to say it now. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Like, lately in the last year, mm -hmm. how many times I've had that feeling of, like, what is the point? Mm -hmm. we, we, we're doing all this. What is it? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't understand the end game anymore. No. It's not like 12 years ago where it was like we, we thought we saw some kind of end game. I don't understand what the end game is anymore. And I felt the frustration you felt in that. In that moment, there is no end game. It's because it's like the end game is being popular. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the end game when we started doing this was finding answers. Right. And now right. I feel like the end game is being popular. Yeah. And it's like a, a slap in the face of all this and like mocking almost mm -hmm. and just like <laughs> you. <laughs> your views and your popularity mm -hmm. and your little things and like it's no you're exactly right the spiritual it's, level of what is going on in these places is so much deeper mm -hmm. than this earthly right thing. yeah i don't yeah. even know how to explain it no that's I'm still just kind of like dazed lately yeah. all i can think whenever i think about the paranormal is you can't fake authenticity i was like yeah. i keep saying it because that's how i feel like you can put on a show, you can make it seem scary, but you can tell who feels it. And like with this place, my n normal reactions are, I hate it, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I hate what happened here. Half the time I hate what goes mm -hmm. on here, mm -hmm. but I love this place because it's, I've spent so much time here and I've met so many awesome people and created so many relationships and like it's the, the duality yes. you know it's yin and yang all happening at the same time and it's yeah god that gives me goosebumps all over my entire body what johnny expressed during his quarantine couldn't resonate any better with me i've always been a little bit of a nihilist and i can't count how many times i've asked myself why i'm still doing this how many teams come to the house and naively tell johnny they're going to figure out who committed this murder how many times do you think Johnny can keep a straight face while hearing that? Johnny and I got into this for the same reasons. We wanted to be a part of serious paranormal research. And over a decade later, we have both watched the field deteriorate into a mockery. Owning both the Madison Seminary and Fairfield County Infirmary, 
I can tell you firsthand that I've seen my fair share of teams spreading misinformation about the existence of demons and putting together false narratives to better increase chances of viewership. How does this benefit actual paranormal research? Do we not want answers anymore? Would we rather acquire quick, empty internet fame instead of putting in the hard work and critical thinking? To me, Johnny is one of the most respected people in this field, and I've found that every time I work with him, he remotivates me to another level I didn't think I could get to. Allowing to vent our equally shared frustrations has now solidified my mission. Existentially speaking, for someone who thinks about death constantly, I understand that history will remember who stood where. The work we leave behind today will be the final resume attached to an online tombstone. Our inscription will be evaluated long after we're gone. The only thing that will matter to those unborn eyes looking at us is who contributed to the field and who was merely in it for themselves. I mean, hasn't history taught us that it's the philosopher that's remembered and not the town drunk? Now, with all of this finally off my chest, it's time to have my final talk with the house. And you may not even feel like answering, but I will get you to do that one way or another. I have each time before. Adam Quarantine, Attic, Villisca Axe Murder House. <sighs> rolling on recorders, rolling. You know, it was very interesting to see Johnny's frustration when he was downstairs. I actually can relate to that. I actually can relate to that. I, I understand completely. I ask myself all the time, why am I still doing this? This is 12 years later. You were the first thing I went out to actively investigate. I get it though sometimes. I think about it, like, what's the point anymore? That made me sick to my stomach. And the walkie is dead. So there's no communicating. Can't beat it, really. I mean, there was just, it just said full bars when I first turned it on. Really? Yeah. Although by saying that to you right now, it makes me wonder, how many people have come in to say that to you? What's the point? It seems like everybody comes in here with some kind of mission. I've got to find the killer. Let's be honest with each other, House. The killer isn't here. The killer isn't here. You can put robot rays in there. You can? Yeah. Do we have them? Oh, yeah, we'll have double laser. You know, I've waited a long time to come back. I have. And it's like, what do I want to say to you? I, I have all these things that I wanted to say because I, I think you are something else. You know, and you are something else that I do like to taunt. But, but where, what have you done in the last 10 years even compared to where I, what I've done? We're not in the same place we both started. I feel like I've matured a little bit. I've grown. I've calmed down. Come up here behind me and just attack me. I'm by myself. Come on. Since I was last here, I've acquired two properties, the Madison Seminary and the Fairfield County Infirmary, and I helped open up the doors at the Indiana State Sanatorium. You are still here 
in this very place still feeding off the fear of thrill seekers. Did you try to call me? We just lost, we haven't talked to you this whole time because we lost battery power, full battery died. Oh, okay, so you just switched the batteries out? Okay. But you know what? Talking back to the house, you were my first. You were my first, you were very special. This was the first haunting I encountered and I seeked out. And it's a very special relationship. I think I treat you a little differently than the countless others that come through. I think I treat you a little differently than the countless others that come through. Okay. I treat you differently than the countless others that come through. What does that mean? You intrigue me. Right? You get a lot of people that come through here for, for thrill seeking. And like Johnny said, like, what is the point anymore? Like, what is this even about? It's deeper than just some scares and some jump outs and things like that. I really want to understand what you are at a, some kind of physical level. Why are you even existing with us? Why are you here? And I know you've been asked this all the time. And you may not even feel like answering, but I will get you to do that one way or another. I have each time before. I've always done something that I told you. I'm going to do this and they'll remember this. Back in 2010. And we're going to invite our new friend Johnny Hauser to join us in the investigation for about an hour. Let's go get him. I put an axe over my head before a lot of other people were coming through here. I had an axe over my head and I said, put, spring the trap and take one more life. Now I told you earlier that I was gonna give you an opportunity you can't refuse to take one more life. Then, in 2014, I came back and I told you I was going to play out a scene and the world was gonna think that was how it happened. And I came out of this attic claiming to be Reverend Kelly, but the family was ready. Stop, stop. And I had them kill you. Rest in peace, please. I feel you. I absolutely feel you. There is a very cold chill that just lingered into the room. It's like it's crawling towards me. It's like it's crawling towards me. I can feel that I'm receiving information, but there's no information to unpack. It's very weird. This has never happened. And I think I'm seeing shadow play out by the camera behind it. Becca, if you can hear me, I could use some additional eyes here. I was just telling Chris that it's hard for me. This haunting is so... It, I don't know how to explain it. I, it's not personified, so it's hard to communicate with it. Like, when you experience that, your eyes literally just roll back in your head. But... Uh, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss, honestly. You've taken my eyes from me. That's Becca. She's one of the best. You know, it's intriguing, the whole eye thing. Now thinking back, during your quarantine, your eyes were burning. I just felt like fire go across my eyes. And the image in my mind was a man saying, the blind cannot see. Addie, when she was filming the Estes method, her eyes were burning. Are you okay? My eyes burn and my vision keeps getting blurred. Everything's fine. Uh, maybe you don't want us to see you. Your eyes cannot see me. And that's interesting to me. So you took my eyes away, and it's really just you and I. It's really just you and I.
You know, there, there is such a fine line between genius and insanity and even a narcissist. I'm a narcissist, I'll say it, but I, I, I can control these things and I, I think you love it. You've let it consume you. You know, we, we each have a monster in our heads. The difference between my monster and your monster is I can control when it comes out of the cage. And that's where that fine line is. You couldn't control your monster. Whatever you are here, which I don't think you are the murderer, you have blanketed this, you took this, you are a predator. You saw an opportunity and you've nested here. I feel energy moving through my body as a reaction, but I don't know what it means. It's so strange. My question is, can an energy that is so narcissistic and egotistical sit back and let me perform and you just have to take it? I'm intrigued. I've never met something that has the ability to do that. And I don't think you have that kind of self-control. That has the ability to do that. I don't think you have that kind of self-control. I can feel you swirling around me. If you're trying to penetrate me through my shields, I'm too strong, I'll tell you right now. I did hear one psychic thing and I don't know what it means. Be the light. Be the light. I like that. I like that. Oh. Note for audio, there is a train passing by. Do you want me to wait to tell you what I just heard psychically? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> it's pretty awful. We got time. Lay down and die. In 2010, I did lay down. Dude, I just heard growling over here. But I didn't die. Feels like something's wrapping around me. It's, I'm only saying that because it's the way the cold is touching me. I don't know how to describe it. Like I can feel the cold gliding, like on the back of my hand. Like on the back of my hand. <laughs> listen, I could yell at you in the dark, but we're more likely to listen to a soft-spoken voice than something yelling. We both can agree on that. We both can agree on that. You know, I've never talked about this, especially on camera, I think maybe only to my circle, but the very first time I came here, I, I saw you did things to me that night when I slept. I had visions, very bad visions. I know they weren't my thoughts. I know they weren't. So I know what you're capable of doing. So, so here's your last open mic with me. This is it. I'm never stepping foot back in this house again. Last time to talk on the telephones. They're flashing right there. Say what you will. This is it. I waited 10 years to have this final talk with the house, and this was the only time I've been here where I haven't done a ripple. We had one ready, but we agreed the house upstaged us with its own ripple by calling forth a traveler with a criminal record. And it's like the house is literally saying, hey, let me show you what happened back in 1912. Although, I wouldn't expect anything less from the infamous Velisca Axe Murder House. What we've accomplished in the last two days has only shed a little more light on what is really happening out here. It was done with an axe, help me. And yes, Johnny Hauser is an absolute key to this haunting. Anyone who visits the house should listen to his details and theories carefully, as he's one of the most valuable assets we have in this field. 
Now, with our Velisca chapter complete, it's time to head to Illinois to visit one of the newest locations on the grid, Pinelawn Manor.